Now let us see how consumers make actual consumption choices. In terms of a framework, what we want to determine is how many units of clothing would consumers buy in a country and how many units of food would consumers buy in a country. Or what we are looking at is the theory of consumer behavior. In order to determine actual consumption choices, we need two information. One is about consumer preferences, and this is something we have studied through community indifference curve. And the second thing we need is the financial information or the budget constraint. And once we have these two bits of information, we can figure out how many units of clothing and how many units of food will be consumed within a country. Now, very quickly, let us just go through the properties of community indifference curves. The first one being that a community indifference curve is usually downward sloping. The second one being a community indifference curve further away from the origin implies higher level of satisfaction. The third property being two community indifference curves can never intersect. And the fourth one is about convexity of indifference curve. And that is based on diminishing MRSCF or diminishing marginal rate of substitution between clothing and food. And we already know that MRSCF is the slope of indifference curve. And what is the slope? It is change in food divided by change in C. And this will give us the slope of indifference curve, which is called marginal rate of substitution between clothing and food. A quick recap of what we know about the budget line or the budget constraint. We know this person saves or borrows nothing. And hence, income must equal total expenditure on clothing and food. And in this equation, income and prices are known to us. What is not known to us is quantity of clothing and quantity of food. So based on this equation, we can figure out what will be the intercept on the vertical axis when we have units of food on the vertical axis. And that will be income divided by price of food. And since we have units of clothing on the horizontal axis, the intercept on the x-axis will be income divided by the price of the good on the horizontal axis. And the slope of the budget line is price of clothing divided by price of food. And since it is downward sloping, we have put a negative sign here. In this diagram, we bring consumer preferences which are represented through community indifference curve and also the financial information which is represented through the budget line. So let's call them CIC1 and BL1. And what you find is when you look at a point like this, this is a point of tangency between the budget line and the community indifference curve. And at the point of tangency, what should happen is the slope of community indifference curve must equal the slope of the budget line. And what is the slope of community indifference curve? It's MRSCF. What is the slope of the budget line? It is PC divided by PF. Or in other words, this point where these two are equal is called consumer equilibrium. And since we'll be using it again and again, we will call or abbreviate this as CE. We believe that consumer equilibrium point is the best point for the community in terms of consumption choices. And since it is the best point, this is where all the consumers will be. And you drop this point to the horizontal axis. And what you have determined is the quantity of clothing that will be consumed by this country. And that will be OC1. 
and you take this point to the vertical axis and you know how many units of food will be consumed by this country and that will be OF1. So OC1 and OF1 represent the exact quantity of clothing and food that this country will consume given the budget constraint and consumer preferences. In the discussion of the previous diagram, I had mentioned that consumer equilibrium is the best point for the consumers. And the reason for that is consumer equilibrium implies two things. And let us consider the first one on this slide and the next one we'll look at in the next slide. Now, consumer equilibrium represents the highest level of satisfaction given the budget constraint. That is, this is the max the consumers can reach given the budget constraint. Look at the following. We are given this CIC1, and here we have point of tangency. Suppose you are given another community indifference curve. Let's call this CIC2. And this community indifference curve is further away from the origin. Or in other words, CIC2 implies higher level of satisfaction relative to CIC1. Now, given the budget constraint that we have BL1, we know CIC2 is simply unattainable, unattainable by this community. And then you look at another indifference curve. Let's call this CIC3. Now, is CIC3 attainable by consumers in this society? Sure it is, because this BL1 budget constraint can satisfy and get you on to CIC3. But we know that CIC3 is closer to the origin relative to CIC1, or in other words, implies lower level of satisfaction relative to CIC1. And thus, this is how we prove that consumer equilibrium represents the highest level of satisfaction given the budget constraint. The second thing implied by consumer equilibrium is that suppose the society wants to attain this level of satisfaction. To attain this level of satisfaction, what consumer equilibrium implies is the amount of money that you are spending to attain this level of satisfaction is the lowest with BL1. And this is what the consumer equilibrium represents as well. Now consider the following. <clears throat> Suppose there is another budget line, another budget line, and let's call this BL3 or BL2, sorry, BL2. Now, the, with BL2, we can again hit the same level of satisfaction implied by CIC1. But when you compare BL2 to BL1, what you find is BL2 means higher income or more expenditure by the consumers relative to BL1. So if you can attain the same level of satisfaction, with lower money, you would always do that. Another possibility, look at the following. Suppose you are given another budget line. Now let's call this BL3. Now, the satisfaction implied by CIC1 is definitely not attainable when you use BL3, though we know BL3 implies lower level of expenditure or income by the consumers. And that is how we show that this is what consumer equilibrium represents, and that is the lowest level of expenditure or income required to attain a given level of satisfaction. So the condition for equilibrium is that the slope of the indif community indifference curve must equal the slope of the budget line, or in other words, MRSCF, must equal PC by PF. And this, when you attain this, you know the society is at its best point. 
Now consider the following. Suppose MRS is given to you in a given situation as negative 10 and the price of clothing equals price of food and this is equal to 1. Now for attainment of this condition we require the slope of community indifference curve to equal slope of the budget line or in other words MRSCF must equal PC by PF. Now we calculate PC by PF and that will be 1 divided by 1 and that will give us 1. And since we are looking at slope of budget line, slope of budget line will be negative 1. What about slope of indifference curve? It is negative 10. Or in other words, in this situation, what you find is marginal rate of substitution between clothing and food is greater than the price ratio. And in this, and so this is clearly not an equilibrium point. And here we ask the question, how can this society attain equilibrium or the best point? The way we work through this is as follows. We believe that consumers cannot change the price ratio. Why? Because we believe each consumer is very small in relation to the market and hence the consumers cannot negotiate a price. For example, when I walk into Walmart, I am very small in relation to Walmart and whatever price is set by Walmart, I have to take it as given and try to do the best I can. Now, since we want equality between MRSCF and PC by PF, we know we cannot alter PC by PF. And so in a mechanical way, what this implies is we should take steps to reduce MRSCF. And when we reduce MRSCF, what should happen? And what is MRSCF? It is the slope of the indifference curve. Now look at this diagram that we have seen a number of times and that is about community indifference curve and the curve is convex to the origin. And when it is convex to the origin, what this means is as you go down the curve, the slope absolute value of slope diminishes or in other words the curve becomes flatter and flatter and since we want the slope of the curve to diminish or to go on falling till we get an equality like this one what we do is the following so you go down this community indifference curve and go on doing it till you hit equilibrium point now consider the following. Suppose you started at this point. Let's call this A. And as you move down, you move to a point like B, just as an example. Now what do you do in order to make these two equal? That is MRSCF equal to PC by PF. MRSCF falls when we go down this community indifference curve. When we go down this community indifference curve, what this means is we must reduce consumption of food and increase consumption of clothing. And we should go on doing it till we hit an equality between MRS, CF, and the price ratio. So this is how this society will attain equilibrium or the best point for in terms of consumption choices. Another way to look at this is the following. <clears throat> when you compare these two, what you find is relatively price of clothing must be somewhat cheaper. cheaper. And in terms, if you are at point A, what is happening is you are relatively consuming fewer clothing. And we know by from economic theory, when price is lower, we should buy more of it. And that's what the consumers need to do. And this is how the, com the country will attain equilibrium. This completes our discussion on this topic. Thank you for your time.